Test, test. Goodness gracious. All right, keep going. Right? Who can open the doors of his face? His teeth are terrible. I appreciate you, bro. His scales are his pride. Shut up together as with a closed seal. Uh-huh. One is so near to another that no air can come between them. Right? So he's looking at, look, this Leviathan. He's saying his scales is so close together, nothing gonna come between them. Right? For everybody, since y'all couldn't hear us, you know what I'm saying? For everybody, what we trying to what we trying to put together, we trying to understand when the when the world teaches us about plate tectonics, we trying to understand how the Bible describes certain things, right? And trying to trying to understand like what happened. So we went to Genesis, we read how everything on the earth died. Right? The animals walking on the earth, the men walking on the earth, the uh creeping things on the earth, and the uh fowl, the birds that's in the air, the fowls of heaven. All of that died. One thing he didn't name is what was in the water. What was in the water didn't die. So that's why you can still find stuff in the water that looked crazy to us, right? But people never relate what looks crazy to us in the water and say, hmm, I wonder what was walking around on the ground. Right, I wonder what was walking around on the ground. Like, I wonder what's here. Right, you look at some of these animals and it look crazy. We can theorize why they look all so crazy, you know what I'm saying? But you look at some of these, these animals that's under this water, and you let them, like, you just watch the Discovery Channel one day and watch them go deep into that water. When they, you know what I'm saying, when they, it's too deep where they can't even send a man down there. They just got to send, like, this machine and this camera. And they go. They know more about, like, uh, the moon and space than they do about those. They don't know nothing about that thing. Because that thing is so much pressure down there. Like, even if you send somebody down there, it's so much pressure. They if he know. come up, what's going to happen to his blood? His blood going to explode. The most I got that, that thing set up so nice. If your butt go down, your blood gonna fill up with what they call nitrogen. That's what the scientists tell us. It's gonna fill up with nitrogen, nitrogen. And then once that happens, it's gonna expand your veins and you're gonna die. They gotta, you know what I'm saying? You, they gotta bring you down, I mean bring you back up slowly, little by little, so that your body reconforms. Right? And then they gotta take you out. And if anything go wrong, they gotta put you into this isolated room and treat you. Right? He got that thing all sewed up. You, your butt not getting down there. So then they try to take a, they try to take a camera. But guess what happened when the cameras go down too far? Them thing, bah! You know what I'm saying? Them thing, bah! So the most I got, got that thing set up where I'm only gonna let you see so much now. They get to going down there, they get to seeing something, they see them big old darn fish go, and that thing just light up. It's completely dark, ain't no lights down there. All of a sudden, they got a camera down there, all of a sudden, this fish go by and just light all the way up. And then swim away real quick. They like, man, I don't know what type of fish that is. Yeah, I don't know what type of fish that is either. They'll probably see something like that. You know what I'm saying? That might not be a fish that you look at. You know what I'm talking about? That might not, them might not just be regular fishes that you looking at. It might be all types of stuff. Grab uh, Genesis. We're going to talk a little bit tonight. Grab Genesis. We're going to come right back there too. Grab Genesis chapter 6. Give me, a, give me, give me verse 3. Give me verse 1. It's Genesis chapter 6, verse 1. Mm. Yeah. The violin breathed fire, too. We get back to it. We're going back. You said they breathed fire. Yeah. We go back to it. What breathed fire? You'll see. Dragon. Where do you think dragon came from? You think these people made that stuff up? Dragons is real? You think these people didn't? You think, you, think, you think every culture, every single culture, let me, there's two things that every single culture in the world has talked about. A flood. These scientists ain't gonna teach you this. The flood, all these cultures talked about it, and dragon, fire breathing animals. All these cultures, most of the cultures talk about that. You think everybody just making it up? And we just we just got Facebook. All these people just before was like, listen, let's all just make up. No, nah, nobody wouldn't even nobody would connect it until now. Whole world connected now. We can we can put a put together a scam. Right? Back then we put together a scam like that. No, nah, these people were looking at stuff. They're looking at stuff. They're dealing with stuff. Then the flood came. Right? Got rid of it. In the water, rest assured, the same thing. Okay. If an animal is, is, is thousands of feet deep into the water. I don't know how deep it is for real. But if an animal is thousands of feet deep into the water, and that thing out of nowhere can ignite itself and light up, literally bring light around itself, is it far-fetched to think that an animal can't breathe fire? How do you produce that light? Right. 
Right. Where'd the light come from? Or like how clams produce pearls. It is amazing. That's right, baby. <laughs> right. From a grain of sand. I'm starting to think you're going to be joking. No. She's not. Hmm. Clams do produce pearls. Right. <laughs> clams do not produce pearls. On the Discovery Channel. Y'all better stop believing all these people this time. <laughs> Start messing with everybody here anyway. <laughs> White man be lying to y'all. <laughs> right? But now you look at it, and, and if you just look at it logically, we've been conditioned to not believe certain things because scientists, since they haven't observed it, don't believe it. That's how they, they, they've designed their practice to be that way. You know what? For the sake of us not giving up, right? It came from a, it came from a fruitful thought. What they were thinking, scientists originally, when they came up with this type of thing, what they were thinking is, for the sake of us not just giving up and being lazy, right? Because you can start researching and say, all right, I put this experiment together, but I didn't find, I didn't really find the answer like I wanted to find it. But guess what? I'm a Christian, though. I'm a good Christian at that, right? Guess what I'm going to say? Don't worry about it. God did it. Right? So I stopped researching. It's like, it's not even important to me. We'll never, you know, we're going to come. Once I, once I reach the end of my research and I can't figure nothing else out, or I'm too lazy to keep going, I'm just going to be like, you know what? Well, so that God don't want us to know, right? God don't want to, it's still a mystery, so I'm not going to research. So from a scientist standpoint, they say, you know what? That's detrimental, right? Even though, even though the best scientists, the ones that's like real famous, they the ones that was like trying to search out God. And then that's how they came yeah. to their stuff. Yeah, true, but at the end of it, at the same time, when you do that, once you feel like you've reached the end as a believer, you looking like, okay, well, something, because we, our book tell you the mysteries belong to who? But the things that are revealed belong to who? So these, these, these Christians, these Gentiles, they think Christians replace Israel. When he say us, he talking about me. So they looking like, okay, I figured all this out and my research brought me to what was revealed. Okay, I can't, my research ain't working no more. Like I'm reaching dead ends everywhere. You know what? That's a mystery of God. It's not, it's, given, it's not for me. So then they give up, right? So then other scientists look at that and be like, well, no, we can keep going. You know what made us stop going? The fact that you believe in God. So now, after a while, that becomes enmity, right? It's like, no, 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 no. God is not real. Because now, if I say God is not real, my research continues. If I say God is real, I fear that the research stops. This is my craft. I love it, right? So now, God is not real. So now, it becomes a thing of Showing how, how much we don't need God. And that's why you'll see, you, if you listen to these scientific debates or scientists versus the Christian and all that, you, well, one of the things you're going to always hear the, the scientists say is you don't need God to come up with it. Like, you don't need God to explain this. You don't need God to explain that. Science explains this. Because their mindset is, I don't want you to rely on God to come up with these answers because if you reach a dead end, you're just going to give up. It's all this, everything, all the evil that we look at in the world come from an innocent place. It just comes from a, a pure, innocent thought in people's minds. That's why it's dangerous. That's why that's why we have to be cognizant. Just because things feel okay, just because things, you know, we have to be able to look in the book and say, you know what, the book is right. If the book say it, go with it. Otherwise, that thing will develop into something crazy and it's like, you look back and you're like, I don't know what that darn was. What was I getting into? And then you get stuck. And that's how these start all this to the pastors. You look at these pastors, the pastors start off, and the pastors are talking about, uh, uh, I just want to have as many people saved as possible. That's a nice, honest thought, right? That's like, that's like a noble thought. Like, I want as many people saved as possible. What does that turn into? Okay, how do I get as many people as I can in the church? That's fine. At that, at that level, it's fine. It's an okay thing to do. But then, now you say, okay, if I want as many people, I need a bigger church. If I need a bigger church, people are going to need to pay tithes. People are going to need to take tithes because I need a bigger church to fit more people so that more people get saved. When you're paying tithes, you are saving people. Right? So then they get, they get caught up now in the tithe because it, when you break it down like that, what's the driver of your goal at that point? Money. Right? Money is the driver of your goal. And now in your mind, you have a noble goal. Your goal is to get more people saved. I need money to do that. So at the drive, I got to get that drive. I got to keep that thing driving. Right? Keep the money going. So now, 
every week, I'm going to get in front of the church and I'm going to talk about all oh, the building fund. Oh, well, you know, the Lord spoke to me and he told me that this, that, and the other need to happen and we need to move to this building. Oh, the Lord told me, you know what? They called me and they said they're going to shut down the church today, y'all. I just need five people. That's all I just need. If I can just get five people that, that can stand with you. know what? Hold on. I just need five people that stand with me. I ain't got no money. I'm going to put my credit card down there. I just need five people that stand with me and just give a gift. They got like $20 to go in there. Give. Lit our butts up, didn't they? <laughs> they ought to be ashamed of their stuff. Just give a gift today. Right? How many, how many people can put in a hundred? Oh, you. And the sister right, oh, the Lord talking to me again. Okay, $50, $50. Tell me they don't do that. They have dropped that thing, and all they sitting here doing is they doing a reverse door. What's it called? Auction. A reverse door auction. Oh, 100, 100. Who got 100? Oh, the Lord. Oh, the Lord's still moving. I feel it in the spirit. Okay, go 50, 50. All right, all right, all right. Just 10. Whatever you got, just come bring it up here. Then they go and they bring it up there. They do two runs of that. They always do two runs. They're going to do the one early and the one late. Then you're going, then you're going to do communion, right? Then you're going to pray. Then your butt out of there. <laughs> they always going to hit you up. Listen, a, a smart church, they ain't about to let your butt walk in there. They, Because they know us. We will mess around and leave early. We will mess around and be like, oh, well, you know, I got to go to work. Or, you know what I'm saying? We get our butts right up out of there. They'd be crazy to sit there and let you walk in there and wait until the end of church. That's them white churches that do that. The white churches are waiting to the end. Black churches, as soon as your butt walk in there, oh, you can see the collection plate coming. They going to pass that thing around. As soon as, your butt, as soon as they see you hitting the floor, that choir singing, you know what I'm saying? Soon, I mean, before they get that last note on that, the ushers lined up like, okay, you know what I'm saying? We got your butt. Right? It's the part they like. They like the singing part. Oh, ain't nobody leaving during this. That's crazy. Ain't nobody going to leave. A black person leaving during the singing? Ain't nobody leaving during that darn singing. Everybody going to be standing up, praising the Lord, doing all that extra stuff. Meanwhile, us are sitting there like this. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even worry about it. Like, don't even worry about it. Oh, that thing about to get passed. He going to frisbee that thing right too. <laughs> Boom! Put your dollar in there. Pass it on. You know, you got to keep that thing going. And keep it moving because they got their eye on you. They be on every row, don't they? They be on every row looking like this. You you talking to your neighbor? Don't be sitting there talking to your neighbor. They lean, they lean over the whole thing. Uh, brother. Uh, brother, there you go. Yeah, I'm saying you pass that thing and then go to the next darn row. Just tell me I'm lying. You look at the evidence. All, all, all I like doing is looking at evidence. If you look at the evidence, what is it about at that point? No, no. In their mind, they're looking at let's get more people in the church. Right? But what, what is it really about? It's about the money. I need the money to keep going. So you'll see there's some pastors even that are saying some pastors told us, I don't take a dime. Yeah, I don't take a dime. I don't, I don't know. They, they, they don't say that. That'd be a lie. They ain't going to let themselves lie like that. They, what do they say? I don't have a salary is what they say. Yeah, yeah. They say, I don't take a salary. There's a difference, right? What's a salary? Salary is what you get paid no matter what you do. Salary is saying, Yearly. this is what you're going to get paid yeah. regardless. Right? All you got to do is show up. It ain't got to be this long. If your butt show up, you're going to get paid. It's a lot of pastors that don't take a salary. Right? But not taking a salary is not the same as not getting paid. You can get paid commission. You can get paid a percentage. All that don't fall under the purview of a salary. So when the pastor used to tell me that, I don't take no salary. Or my pastor don't take no salary. Why would you know your pastor don't take a salary? Because he told you that. Why would he tell you that? It's right. If he's teaching the truth, it's right for him to take it. Who gonna tell, if, a man, if a man of God teaching the truth, who going to tell you you can't take a salary? The book tells you a worker is worth his wages. So why he sitting there bragging I don't take a salary? Because his butt, he's trying to trick you. No, he don't take no salary. Let him say he don't take a dime. Ask you, tell, have you ever taken money out of the, from, from what was collected at church? I bet you ain't going to answer that question like that. Yeah, your butt take it. You know what I'm saying? You get a cut now. You know, you may, it may not be a salary. It may not be a set amount that you get paid every year. But your butt definitely getting a cut. That's right. I understand. I get. Listen, you got some expenses. You got a church. I get it. I I wouldn't be up there sitting there lying. I'd be like, listen. You know what I'm saying? We got some stuff to take care of around here. Y'all see these darn lights? 
You know what I'm saying? Y'all see these big old lights up here? Y'all see the darn TVs everywhere? Y'all got the y'all seen the overflow room? Overflow room over there, you know what I'm saying? We got the big TV so everybody can see. Listen, we gotta keep. Y'all have y'all seen the audio set? Look the audio set up back there. I gotta pay that man that worked the audio? He ain't free. Oh, y'all be thinking these people up in church for free? Bro, oh, them white churches got dope. Bro, you think no, no. I'm talking about the black churches. You think no, I know. you think they up in there for free? The drummer? The man playing the keyboard? Oh, they started off for free. And then you know what happened? Oh, no, Pastor, I can't. You know what I'm saying? I got it. Oh, brother, you. Oh, brother, we need you. I tell you what. What if I. What if I can give you this? I mean, you just keep playing here. What if I give you this? I can get that for playing here. <laughs> right? Praise the Lord. Hey, on that organ, man. That's why. You think they. You think they sitting there playing that organ that good for that many years just because they love God and they ain't even learned about God? That don't make no darn sense. They out there. Every key. Oh, that's a dollar. Bro, boom, was, boom, boom. When I was a kid, they used to pay my mom to come in on Saturday and clean the church. And I didn't like it when I was a kid. She, was, she just looked so tired, bro. And it just, I don't know, I didn't like it. They I used to clean the church. I used to look like, now that I think back, I'm like, man, that, I don't know. I don't see nothing. I, I disagree a little bit. I didn't like it. If they were teaching the truth, I think that would be fine. You pay the people that come there, the people that learn about the truth, the money getting handed out for the service. That's good. That's keeping the money within the community. I like it, right? That's good. The money came from our people. We pay the people that do the service. That's our book. Really, if you look at it, you look at the you look at the Levites, you know what I'm saying? The Levites got paid by the people that came. You know what I'm saying? You make a you make a you made a uh, a sacrifice, that thing gonna go to the sons of uh, Aaron and to the Levites. Alright? So that I mean I, I like the setup. Part I don't like, they ain't teaching no darn truth. Yeah, she just looked too tired to me. I ain't like it. Yeah, no, I get that. I get that, you know what I'm saying? But they ain't teaching no darn truth. Right? That's what we, I mean, we just have to kind of look at it. These people, these people will set us up. They'll start us out in a good place. End up taking us way off. That's why we have to pay attention. You know what I'm saying? Everything, got to pay attention. Be like, okay, and then check it. You know what I'm saying? Where are we going with this? How, how it's going? Don't let these people just tell you anything out here in these streets. They must they mess around. Send your butt on. You know what I'm saying? Where were we? Genesis. This Genesis. Let me see Genesis chapter uh, 6, verse 1. I'm trying to remember what we were talking about. Oh yeah, we talking about these these strange animals underneath this water on the Discovery Channel, right? Let's hear about it. It was strange animals everywhere. It's Genesis chapter uh, six. Give me verse one. Watch what the book say. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them. Uh-huh. That the sons of God. The sons of God. saw the daughters of men that they were fair. They saw the daughter, daughters of men. They said, you know what? They look good. It's a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. And they took the wives of all they chose. Mm-hmm. Then they took wives of the sons. So the sons of God. Sons of God is what? Angels. Right? That's what we can kind of consider heavenly bodies, right? These, these, these celestial, these beings, right? These different things. You know what I'm saying? Sons of God came down. They're like, oh, them ladies look good. They start taking wives for themselves. You know what I'm saying? Let me, let me, uh, you know what I'm saying? Let me get the wives. What do y'all should tell us about the angel? They're not giving a marriage. He said, listen, when, in the regeneration, when we all resurrected, we gonna be just like the what? The angel. And we're not what? Given into marriage. They are not to marry, nor are they given into marriage. In other words, they can't go choose a wife, nor can we say, you know what? Mm, I'm giving you this wife. Right? So now you look at him, he tell us that, but we look clearly here, we got heavenly bodies, came right on down there looking like, oh, I won't hurt. Uh oh, let's see what happened. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also flesh. Uh huh. He also is flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. Mm -hmm. And there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bear children to them. The same became mighty men, which are, were of old, men of renown. And God so said, now you see sons of God, heavenly bodies, angels, if you will, coming down. They chose wives of the women. And then now these wives that they chose had babies. And when they had these babies, guess what these babies became? 
Giants. So there was a lot of weird stuff going on. Right? You notice know right after that, guess what the most high God said? Uh I'm about to flood the earth. Stop. <laughs> Some of this stuff had to die. So now now you kind of look at it, okay, it makes sense. Right? You make sense. You kind of look at it like, okay. He said it was evil in the world and he's not gonna strive with us forever. Right? And we be looking like, man, it's evil now. Nah, why? I mean, you know, why he ain't running this thing over now? You look at it, it wasn't just no regular evil. You had sons of God coming down, laying with these women, and then making giants, making perverted human beings, perverted beings. Right? So now, then, if you take that even further, we don't have to talk about it too much, but if you take that even further, the giants, it said they were there before the flood? Mm -hmm. Read about it. I don't think it was after the flood. Read it. Uh, and God saw that the wickedness of men was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had oh, made go back. man on go the Go back earth. to the giant. There were, giant in the earth, there were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bear children unto them, the same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. So in those days, and also what? After that. So we look at it, it was giants. He flooded the earth. Somehow, it was still giants after that. Right? So that means it was still sons of God coming down, messing around. Okay. How does he deal with that? He had, uh, he had the nations take him up. So you know all the nations that we invaded when we was when we was when we came out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. You remember we went and we got the Canaanites, yeah. and we got the Moabites, and we got the uh, Ammonites, right? We got all these different nations. Guess what? All those nations had in them, every last one of them, descendants of the giants. So you look at it and you see it makes now it makes a little bit more sense why the Most High God said, you know what? Don't take any of them. Don't make marriages with any. What happens if I get mad that a son of God came down, laid with this woman, made a giant, right? And then you mess around and you marry a descendant of that giant. What does that make you at that point? That make you something I got to kill. My whole thing was I'm flooding the earth partially because this wickedness is going on. That thing continued and now you marrying into their offspring. Oh, no, now you got to go, right? So he telling you, do not marry these people in this area. That's why he told us we can marry the people that's from far off. But the people that the Canaanites, don't you mess with them, right? Don't mess with none of those people. When they had mixed in, the, the, the Moabites, Moabites weren't Canaanites, but they were mixed in with them. So the Moabites, since Ruth was a Moabite, it was okay for Boaz to marry her because God commanded the Moabites to take out the giants that was in their land before the Moabites took them. Same same thing with Esau. He commanded the uh, the Edomites. Edomites to go and do the same thing, right? And this is all in, this is all in Deuteronomy one, right? We read some of it. Ammon, um, Ammon, Edom, Moab—they all killed all the giants to get their land. And you notice all those people, Hebrews, right? Or came from Abraham, <laughs> right? All of those people came from Abraham. You know what I'm saying? Lot didn't technically come from Abraham, but he is right there with Abraham. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Like brother, nephew, brother. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you look at it, all of this stuff kind of lines up, right? So we got some weird stuff going on. So when you see these animals in the water, go ahead, let's go back to Job and try to finish this out. You see these animals in the water, and you look at it, and you're like, oh, that's amazing. That's crazy. I ain't never seen nothing like that. I didn't know they had animals like that. Well, just imagine what was walking around before the Most High God flooded the earth. All these, look, all these pictures that these Greeks draw, yeah, of like you got this half man, half like horse, donkey or half that horse thing. looking thing, whatever they're going to go. That's the one though, the half, the half man, half goat. Yeah. So are you saying like, guess what the book lions of Enoch said? Didn't look like lions or bears didn't look like bears? I don't know what lions and bears look like. <laughs> all I'm saying is, <laughs> all I'm saying is that we can look at the water in which we know the Most High God didn't kill the animals there, and if you look deep enough in that water, you see some very very wild stuff, right? However, when you look on the Earth, we're conditioned not to seeing such wild things, and there's a reason for that. 
there's a reason why the, the stuff in the water which did not get killed has some things that we're not used to and the stuff that did get killed it's not, it's not you know it doesn't they don't look the same they don't they don't operate the same I mean on the surface you, you high up in the water yeah you got your whale but even you look at even you look at a whale that thing is huge where where do we have anywhere else anything that big as big as a whale Okay. They tell us about dino dinosaurs, right? They tell us dinosaurs are big. Dinosaurs are big as what? Big, animal. big as a whale, right? As big as they say dinosaurs what? You look at a whale like that's the only thing we'd be able to run into. Why we don't have nothing that big on Earth no more? Look in the water. Now we do. We got something that big because the stuff in the water didn't die. He killed a lot of stuff on Earth, so a certain thing just didn't make it. That's why they gotta dig up they darn darn bones. Cause when that flood came, we had a flood, and you had all this stuff dying in the water, and then all of a sudden, the most. Let's talk about what the Most High God did. We don't skip Job. Let's go back to. Uh, let's go to uh, Psalm 104. Was it? Yeah. This Psalm 104. Cause now we gotta talk about he flooded the earth. Now we gotta, we just gotta talk about what happened. How did how did he recover? And then we gonna kind of you know what I'm saying? Cause we talking about plate tectonics, right? So we trying to we trying to understand all this happened. So he flooded the earth. He didn't kill what was in the water. He killed everything else. But to right. answer your question, Danielle, if you keep reading that chapter in Job, it'll tell you that the Leviathan breathes fire. Yeah, that's a fact. Yeah, that's a fact. So is, is dragon like a Latin name for something? Else? Dragon's Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's the point. point. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta keep that going. You never give it away. This is uh, Psalm 104. What verse I want? You know what verse I want, Dan? <laughs> Jay, do me a favor. Go uh, turn that TV down. You was already with me, huh? You already knew what I was about to say, huh? I appreciate it. I don't know what you looking for. Uh, I should be looking for, uh, should be looking for, uh, uh, give me, uh, Psalm 104, give me verse, what does verse 8 say? They go up by the mountains, they go Give me verse, uh, 6. You cover it with the deep and with the God. Alright, just give me verse 1. This is Psalm 104, give me verse 1. Which one's the God? These kids can't do nothing about that. Couple seconds. It's just a matter of time for somebody to start piling up. It's Psalm 104. Give me verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. Mm -hmm. Who cover thyself with light as with a garment. Mm -hmm. Who stretch out the heavens like a curtain. Mm -hmm. Who lays the beams of his chambers in the water. Mm -hmm. Who makes the clouds his chariot. Who walketh upon the wings of the wind. Who makes his angel spirits, his ministers of flaming fire. Mm -hmm. Who laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be removed forever. Okay. You covered it with the deep as with a garment. The he water. said you covered it with the deep as with a garment. We just read about that in, in, uh, in, uh, in Genesis. He said the high hills was covered. Then he came back later and said what was covered? No. The mountains was covered. That means everything gone. If the mountain get covered, what's higher than the mountain? They can't even build buildings higher than mountains. Right? If the mountains get covered, oh, that, that's done. That got that. The whole world covered. Okay. So the whole world covered. Let's hear about it. Now cover it with the deep as with the garment. The water stood above the mountain. He said the water stood above the mountains. And then what? At thy rebuke, they fled. He said at thy what? Rebuke, they fled. So he, at thy rebuke, the waters fled. They went away. Let's hear about how they went away. At the voice of thy thunder, they hasted away. Okay. They go up by the mountains. They, they, the waters went up by the mountains. What else? They go down by the valleys unto the place which thou hast founded for them. So you know how, like, we got these valleys, right? So you have, you have a mountain, and then underneath you have a valley, right? How do you think that happened? Oh, man, we got to learn some Bible today. Grab... So we're going to come back here, grab Zechariah. We just want to understand how do you get a mountain in a valley, right? Zechariah chapter 14, give me verse 1. We're going to come right back here, though. 
I just want to see, you know what I'm saying, how God would turn, you know what I'm saying, how, how he going to create a doubt. I just want to know how he going to do it. Zechariah chapter 14. This is Zechariah chapter 14. Give me verse 1. You know what these scientists tell you? It's more than enough water on earth to flood the water, the whole world. Right now. Right now. They'll tell you that. You ask them. You know what I'm saying? Just ask them. They say it's 70% water. It's, earth. it's more than enough water on earth to flood the whole world. Most of it is It's underground. You know what the books say? You can eat later. Okay, When the flood happened? It said it was raining. But you know where else water came from? Underground. Underneath. So the water, when the flood came, I mean, I mean I'm just going to spell That's why they were digging wells and blowing up the ground. Oh, yeah. Getting them springs up. I think it down there. So, okay, think about this. Think about just scientifically, we know, like, just imagine, let's say, it's, what's underground? Like, if you go dig deep enough in the ground, what you going to run into? Other than water. Magma. You going to run into magma, right? Right? What'd you say? Ice crystals. Ice crystals? I don't know. I don't know. Ice you might find some ice crystals. <laughs> so magma, they call they say, you know, they you know they white folks technical. Oh, so lava if it's out. when it's over the ground, they call it lava. lava. When it's under the ground, they call it magma. <laughs> anyway. So you got magma, you know, you just want to be proper. temperature when it's underground, that's why. And whatever they say. Just like they say that your blood is blue and as soon as they hit the Like, really? Is it blue? <laughs> you know, I'll cut myself right now. <laughs> I don't think I believe that one. I want to see yeah. that thing. Like, 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 you know, right, you in your body you got blood. red blood cells, right. but like, how, your blood, but you your blood's blood blue. blue. Right. <laughs> Stop all that lining. I'm tired of them lining. You know what I'm saying? They irritate. But anyway, you know what I'm saying? So you look and you dig up underneath the ground. We know that there's magma there. So now, right now, that magma boils up, gets to a volcano. And anybody seen like a volcano erupt? What's the first thing that comes out of it? Smoke, right? No. Oh, first thing to come out is steam. Oh, water. Smoke. Right? Water comes out of that thing first. You know what I'm saying? So just imagine, let's say at one time, the ground, magma, right? I'm just trying to scientifically explain some stuff. We don't know. I'm just guessing. But let's just say at one time, it was magma, magma underneath the ground. And then there was a thin layer of ground over it. And then there was water on top of that. Right? All it would take is for that magma to get hot enough, break through the ground, and then the pressure and the heat from the magma would do what to the water? It rises. It'll push it out. Yeah, when you boil water. And then let's say that would create like a ton of steam. You know what I'm saying? You probably got all types of steam. The steam would go up into the air and then create what? Rain. Condensation. So then it'll start <laughs> raining, and then at the same time, you have water coming up from underneath. And then the fountains would be going like this. So then you got water coming up from underneath, rain coming from the bottom, and the, all the water that was within the earth would so like just all end up on top of the earth. And if the ground is shifting and moving at the same time and it's closing itself up, the water won't have nowhere to go. So now let's talk about if the water don't have nowhere to go and it cover all the mountains, let's talk about how we might make this water go somewhere. I mean, if we just scientists. Let's see. This is Zechariah chapter 14, verse 1. Behold, the day of the Lord comes, and thy spoils shall be divided in the midst of thee. Uh -huh. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. Mm -hmm. And the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished. That's terrible. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall be cut off from the city. That's how we got here. All right, what he just talked about is how we got here. Watch how, watch how he fast forward to the future. People don't even know. People really did be like, oh, that's about to happen. I used to think, that. I used to, oh, this is about to happen. We, this, that, no, that's not happening again. Who, oh, we not going to. After we get out of cap cap get out of uh, captivity and the most high God calls us back to the land, oh, we're not going to captivity again. That ain't in no book. I ain't seen that nowhere in the book, right? So we look at this. We know that he's talking about something that already happened. Watch how he fast forward real quick. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against these those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Right? So then he fast forward. He said, that's going to happen. Y'all going to go into captivity. These people going to come and take y'all butts and y'all going to go into captivity. Then he said, but then the most high God going to go forth and fight these people. So that's a huge gap of time in what he's talking about. He, I mean, you read it, you don't know. It just sounds like, okay, that's going to happen, then next, this going to happen. But now it's a huge gap of time. He said, then he's going to go forth and fight. Let's hear about it. 
and his feet shall stand in that day on the Mount of Olives. Uh oh, now which, we know this is end times. Which his is feet before, gonna stand on the Mount of Olives. Which is before Jerusalem on the east and on the Mount of Olives. And what's shall, gonna happen? Shall cleave in the it's midst gonna of cleave. What does cleave mean? Like a split. Cause you know you Danielle be working Danielle be reading the New King James. Like the clean. What what the New King James say, Danielle? New King James break that thing down for us, right? It's a cleave right here. Something not everybody know what cleave means. Cleave. Right. You know that? that New King James break it, make it real simple for you. Listen, it's gonna split. So you're gonna have a mountain. You got one mountain. And then it splits. So now let's hear what happens. Thereof toward the east and toward the west, and there shall be a very great valley. It's gonna be a very great what? Valley. So now let's go back to Psalm 104. We just saw the Lord work just now. He said, his feet gonna touch the darn ground, and that thing gonna split, it's gonna cleave. After that thing split, it's gonna create a valley. Now he, he created that for us. He said, look, create this valley, y'all walk through. Like how we split the sea. You know what I'm saying? We split the sea, you know what I'm saying? Moses, he split the sea for us. Okay, y'all walk through. He said, this time I'm splitting the mountain. You know, it's to start with water at first, right? Second time around, you know, I ain't gonna do it with water, right? He said, this time I'm gonna split the mountain. Okay, so this is uh, Psalm 104, where we leave off? Uh, verse 8. Okay, this is Psalm 104, verse 8. They go up by the mountains, they go down by the valleys unto the place which thou hast founded for them. Right? So he, they say he go up by the mountain, the water rose up by the mountain, right? Then, mountain split, creates a valley. Then they go down into the valley. Because that's what would happen. I mean, just imagine. You got water built up. It's above the, the, the mountains. It has nowhere to go. What if you just split the mountains and open that up? Even like Las Vegas, you know what I'm saying? It's, exactly. like, a, it's like a mountain, a circle of a mountain. And then like... And like, think of where we are. In the valley. Go into Be the in the valley. valley. So like it was probably... And what are we right next to? You come out here again, I'm looking If you go down to Hoover okay. Dam, what do you got right there? Oh, wow. The Grand Canyon. All that is a split. If you look at the Grand Canyon, all that is is a split. It's a oh big old split big where the water just says shh. And then that creates the Colorado River. Right? Because the water had to rush somewhere. And that's the water that couldn't get past the ground. So then you got lakes and you got rivers and all these different things that created from water sitting on top to water suddenly going underground. Because things split. All right? Keep going. Watch this. We're going to talk a little bit tonight. We ain't done. Thou hast set a bound that they may not pass over, uh -huh. that they turn not again to cover the earth. So then you set a bound. So now you lock it. You put it in the ocean and you put it far underground. And you lock it in a way where it is not going to come back and flood the earth again. Right? Grab a, grab a, grab a, what do we want? What do we want? What do we want? Grab Genesis chapter 10, verse 20. Genesis chapter 10, verse 20. That's probably too far. What's the last verse of chapter 10? 32. 32? Yeah, maybe 20 is what I want. It's Genesis chapter 10. Give me verse 20. Did they turn the TV yeah, I got me like a whole 50 minutes talking about Pangea. <laughs> y'all heard of Pangea? They didn't teach y'all about Pangea? What's Pangea, baby? The big landmass. Yeah. Land that broke out into It wasn't continents, yeah. It wasn't continents, it was just one big. Y'all ain't never, y'all ain't never. That broke out into No, I'm not disagreeing with you. Landmass. You ain't pay attention to that, love? No. Y'all ain't, so, ain't never heard nobody say, look, Africa fit right in. With North America and South America. Oh, yeah. You heard somebody, you heard people say that. Hey, look, if you look at Africa and then you just put it in, it feel like a puzzle piece. That, that's what they did. Feel like a puzzle piece. You can just squeeze them together. Right? <laughs> you look at it because that's what they, you, I mean, that's what they looking at. they like, okay. So they teach that all of everything was like one big landmass. Like everything was all together. Right? And if you look at the map, I mean, you can imagine it, right? You can kind of look at it and be like, okay, this piece goes. So that's where plate tectonics come from. We started off talking about plate tectonics. That's where plate tectonics come from. Because they say 
all of these, so they say, they say underneath the land, there's these big, huge plates that can move. And they have been moving and shifting. And that's how earthquakes happen. Because we have these two, these two plates grinding against each other. And then as they grind against each other, it shakes. Right? Because it's huge land mass. So you feel it grinding. It's like, and for us, that thing feels like this. You know what I'm talking about? So you got one that's like right there, you know, under California. So that's why you see California getting all these shakes. And then all these other places in the world. It's just land mass is grinding, right? The ground is shifting underneath and that causes it to shake, right? So they say that all these was together. But somehow these things got split apart. And as they split apart, I wonder where the water went. Let's hear about it. So after the flood, Let's hear about what happened. Remember the Tower, Tower of Babel. Remember the Tower of Babel? We ain't got to read it, but y'all remember the Tower of Babel, right? What happened with the Tower of Babel? Y'all going to make us read it? All right, it's Jim. It was made to reach the heavens. All right, there we go. Give me something. So, okay, so you got, you got Tower of Babel. It was made to reach the heavens. What did the Most High God tell us to do, though? That we should, that we can't do. No. Destroy <laughs> it. No. That's why they were all freaking out. Oh, confusion. That's, that's how he dealt with it. Oh, we going to talk today. No, we already have 50 minutes. We need to finish You can cut that out. We going to talk today. <laughs> he said, he said, he said, he told us, he said, I want all of you to go and spread. Right? I want you to spread out and populate the earth. Multiply. Right? So he wanted us to cover the earth and multiply. Right? Guess what we decided to do? When I say we, I'm talking about all of humans. We decided under a leader named Nimrod. Y'all heard of Nimrod, right? So under the leader Nimrod, we decided to all pack into one place and then build a tower. And the tower went so high that we was trying to reach the heavens. Now, a lot of people say that they were trying to reach God. That's not what the books say. The books say they're trying to reach the heavens. Just like it say the fowls of the heavens. It's not saying the fowls, the birds of God that was up there with God or that was flying around next to God. Heavens just means sky. Well, they're trying to build the Empire State Building. That's all. They're trying to build a big building, right? They're trying to build something tall. The point of what they were doing, though, is to build something so that everybody could stay together. But the Most High God wanted us to spread out. So that's why he was like, you know what? You're not doing what I told you to do. I'm going to confuse their tongue. Because they're going to be able to accomplish what they want to accomplish if I keep their tongue the same. Right? They're going to be able to stay together just like God. So you know what God did? He created division. He said, you speak no. this language now. No. You speak this language now. You speak this language now. So not only did the land underneath us split, but then the people split after the flood too. And then watch this. This is uh, Genesis chapter 10. Give me verse uh, 20. There are these are the sons of Ham after their families. No, that's not one. Okay. Eber. The people of Shem. Yeah. The children of Shem. What verse? Twenty-two. This is uh verse twenty-two. So this is Genesis. 21. This is Genesis chapter ten, verse twenty-one. Unto Shem also the father of all the children of Eber. Uh huh. The brother of Japheth. Okay. The elder. Okay. To him were children born. Okay. The children of Shem. The children of Shem. Elam. Mm -hmm. And Asher. And Arpachah. <coughs> okay. And Lud. And okay. Aram. And Aram. Watch this. And the children of Aram, Uz, and Hul, and Gether. Okay. And Mash. Okay. And Arpachah begot Salah. And Arpachah. Guess who he, who he begot? Shalah. Shalah. And Salah begot Eber. And Salah begot Eber. And unto Eber were born two sons. Eber had two sons. The name of the one was Peleg. One was what? Peleg. Why was he named Peleg, Lord? For in his days was the earth divided, and his brother's name was Joktan. In Peleg's days, guess what was divided? The earth. Right? So we know based off of the book, the land split. So when they teach us, you know, hey, the land used to be, you know, one big land mass form. Right. I ain't mad at that teaching. You know what I'm saying? Maybe. You know what I'm saying? Book say, Earth split. Maybe it was one last mass form and then he split it into different sectors. Why would that make sense? 
if I'm trying to get all the water out of here and I got people building up and they all speak one language, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to split y'all up. I'm going to make y'all speak different language. I'm going to make you walk over there. And just to make sure, when, when he put the water underground, he said he, he put what on it so that it wouldn't flood the earth again? He said he put a bound on it so that it wouldn't flood the earth again. So what do you think he going to do when people all speak the same language and then he confuse the language and make everybody speak different languages? And then he's saying some this way, some that way, some this way. But we were one big land math form. What do you think he going to do? Just leave it there so they can just walk back across the street and start talking to you again? No. He's like, okay, now we're going to split this thing up. So now we're going to call that America. And we're going to call that Saudi Arabia. And we gonna call. And so now we split up. That's how you get these folks that's all the way over here when they ain't never seen the people that's all the way over here. Right? All the people started in one place. Stuff starts shifting and suddenly don't nobody know anybody anymore. And none of us speak the same language. Right? He do that for a purpose. We had to multiply. Where we leave off last week? Judges, something. Science lesson, right from the book. Science ain't bad. Ain't nothing wrong with science. When they tell them the truth, ain't nothing wrong with science. That thing lying, when it lying over the book, ain't nothing wrong with it. <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with the book. I went to Western, too. So that ain't bad. Western ain't, ain't limitation. They ain't teaching you too much of nothing at Western. That thing's bad. Enough off of Judges 11. I ain't trying to steal my darn credit card. Y'all ain't gonna tell me I left that thing down there. I can't afford to be paying no church. <laughs> we on Judges 12 now. All right, so this is Judges chapter 12. Give me verse 1. This is Judges chapter 12. Give me verse 1. And the men of Ephraim gathered together themselves and went northward and said unto Jephthah, why pass? Why did? Why passest thou over to fight against the children of Ammon? Uh -huh. And did not call us to go with thee. Y'all remember Jephthah? What did Jephthah do last week? Got right off on the enemy. Okay. And then what else did he do? He burned his daughter. Y'all remember he burned his daughter up? Yeah, yeah lit his daughter, his daughter on fire because he made a what? Sacrifice. He made a sacrifice. Uh, but oh. Oh. He made a vow, right? Made a vow with her, and after that, he was like, you know what? I got to go ahead and follow through with this thing. And we had to look in the book and kind of figure out. We, he had a way out, right? He just didn't know. He either didn't know the book or he was, you know, too stubborn to go with the book. Likely, he didn't know the book, right? I like to believe he didn't want to take his daughter out like that. He, if he knew, he would have, you know, he would have gave himself every excuse not to. So likely, he didn't know the book, right? And that's how it's dangerous for us. We got to know all the detail. Otherwise, we mess around and move too fast. That's why I tell, that's why I tell all y'all. You know what I'm saying? It's been time we want to go out there and do something. Let's go, you know, feed the homeless and let's go, you know what I'm saying? Let's do this stuff. And sometimes, you know what I'm saying? We did it a couple of times, but a lot of times something happened. I'll be like, man, I think we moving too quick. Right? We moving too quick because not all of us know the word. Not all of us are solid in the word. Right. So we get out there. Somebody gets asking us a question. We start running our mouth. We tell somebody something wrong. Then what? Now what? Is it worth it? Like, okay, I fed a few people and I feel good about myself. Right, I feel like I did something, you know what I'm saying? Maybe got some notoriety. Maybe it was a news station out there and they saw us. Got some notoriety. Okay, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Not to me, right? You know what I'm saying? We can do all that. All that thing good. Matter of fact, I think we are going to do it um, next year. Um, for, uh, for Pure. We're going to figure out something. I just want to do something different. I don't want to go pull up on D Street and hand out sandwiches. That thing ain't fruitful to me. You know what I'm saying? I want to do something different, but we gotta figure out what to do. You get that good old fun, huh? Man, I don't care nothing about no fun. They crazy. I'll pull up, I'll pull up, you know what I'm saying? I think I, I think we should pull up with the speaker. Cause usually we don't we don't preach no word when we do it. That thing ain't fair. How you gonna get how you gonna Alright, when y'all was was feeding the people, you know what I'm saying? He broke out the fit. Did he do that without preaching some word? No, nah, them people heard the word first. He is out there teaching the word, and then after he got tired of teaching word, he is like, oh they hungry. Remember, they tried to stop him. Y'all, yeah, this is the re They tried to stop him. Like, listen, you know what I'm saying? The people, y'all was out there getting it in. He's like, listen, you know what I'm saying? And my father said this. Then they're like, listen, listen, listen. The people out here hungry. He's like, then why don't you feed them? Would you want us to go to the store and buy for all these people? He's like, man, we're the boy that had the fish. 
Okay, how many pieces of bread you got? Give them this. I think fed. What, the 4,000? 5,000. 5,000 people. One, one place, 4,000. Another place, 5,000. Not right? including the women and children. Not including the women and children. So that's families. You know what I'm talking about? Right? But guess what they got first? The word. That's the type of stuff. I mean, I was, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I did it. We did what we did. We, uh, one year we did what? We did the, we did sandwiches. We did the hot dogs one time. Hygiene bags. Oh, then we did the hygiene bags with the blankets and stuff. Right? Mm -hmm. And we look back and it's like, okay, man, that's a good word. That's a good word, but. Oh, in person. Did anybody, yeah, in person. Did anybody hear the word? Right? But we looking at it in our minds like, okay, we doing, because you know what? We are still a little Christian. You know what I'm saying? As much as we was learning and we were trying to get out, we were still a little bit Christian. You know what I'm saying? So we are just looking like, man, we got to do something because that's what the Christians be doing. We got to change it, right? We got to look at it and say, okay, forget Christians. How, what does the word say? You know what I'm saying? How, how can we model what we do after what we see in the word? We cannot lose if we do that. Right? We cannot lose if we do that. That's important for us. Where are we at? What are we talking about? Uh, Judges 12. Right? Yeah, so Jotham, we were looking at Jotham. Uh, what's his name? Jephthah. We were looking at Jephthah. And Jephthah, uh, we know he burned his, his, his uh, daughter. Right? Because the Most High God let him win the war. He made that agreement. He, st he stuck to his agreement, uh, not understanding the word completely. We assume. And then, in the next chapter, because he won that war, Ephraim, another tribe in Israel, was like, why didn't you call us, right? Why didn't you help us? You remember the same thing happened before, right? Same thing happened before with um, with Gideon. Gideon went out and the same group, Ephraim was like, why didn't you call us? So you see Ephraim like to scrap, right? Ephraim like to get out there, he like to make it happen. You know what I'm saying? If you don't call Ephraim, it's gonna be a problem when you get back. Now notice also Ephraim ain't rushing when it's actually going down. He waiting until it's over to be like, why didn't you call us? And then he wanna have a problem with you. So with Gideon, Gideon defused the situation. He is like, man, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what I mean? You my brother. Jephthah, Jephthah wasn't so nice. Watch how Jephthah, watch how Jephthah handled this thing. Jephthah, you already know Jephthah with it. He burned his daughter. Right? <laughs> Y'all know Jephthah different. You know what I'm saying? Jephthah, Jephthah a different dude. He, he ain't like, you already know he was. You remember how his whole story started? His whole story started with, they was like, yo, bro, get out of here. He was like, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Then they came back to him. They was like, listen. You know what I mean? Why don't you come back? And he's like, okay. First thing he did, first thing he did is negotiated a deal. Oh, I'll come back, but y'all gotta give me some money. They gave him the money, he hired him some men, and he went off the war. Most high God gave him the war. And now, yeah, so Jephthah different. He's not a regular dude. But watch this. Watch how Jephthah handle these dudes. These are our brothers, by the way, too. These ain't no regular people. These are our brothers. These are our people. Right? So this is a different tribe. These are our cousins. Our cousins coming over talking to us and then talking to Jephthah. And watch this. And Jephthah said unto them, I and my people were at great strife with the children of Ammon. Mm -hmm. And when I called you, you delivered me not out of their hands. All right, he said, I called your butt. Don't try to act like I didn't, I didn't call you. I called your butt and you didn't deliver me. So Jephthah already mad about the situation. You ever had somebody come up to you like that and be like, man, why didn't you? And you like, you know I called your darn butt. And you want to act like, oh, he ain't coming to me talking about some why didn't you? After it's all said and done, you know I needed your darn help. And then you go call me after and be like, why didn't you tell me you needed help? I would have. Oh, okay. Don't that thing irritate you? <laughs> listen, Jephthah was like, so listen, when I was down there and I was getting them boys, I called you and you didn't deliver me nothing out of the hand. Watch this. And when I saw that ye delivered me not, I put my life in my hands and passed over against the children of Ammon and the Lord delivered them into my hands. He said, when I saw you didn't come, I said, forget it, I'll do it myself. And the most high God gave it to me. Watch this. That's why then... So wait, 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 why then are you come up unto me this day to fight against me? Mm -hmm. Then Jephthah gathered together all the men of Gilead and fought with Ephraim. But you think Jephthah wasn't with it? He also like, oh, didn't he ask a, didn't he ask a, didn't he ask the Ammonites the same question? Remember he broke down the history for him. He was like, look, our people came here. We've been staying here for this long. Then we here for that long. If your God would have gave you the land, wouldn't you keep it? Okay then. So why then is you out here trying to fight me? Then right after he asked that question, guess what happened? He kicked their darn butts. So you already know that Jeff the Mole. When he asks you that question, you better be ready to scrap. Right? It's some people like that, right? When they, you know what I'm saying, they get to fight. What's happening, homie? They, when they ask that question, that's it. You know what I'm saying? You get one what's happening. It ain't a real question. You gotta, you gotta know, like, that's not, don't, don't answer it. You know what I mean? Because, like, that's not, you know what I'm saying, just, just prepare. 
You know what I'm saying? That's not a real question. That's rhetorical what just happened. Next thing coming is a fist. Right? So he had he was like, listen, so why didn't you try to fight me? Okay, boys, let's get him. So he got Gilead, and then they went up against Ephraim. Let's see. And Gilead fought with Ephraim, and the men of Gilead smote Ephraim because they said, Ye Gileadites are fugitives of Ephraim among the Ephraimites and among the Manassites. Right? So he said the, the Ephraimites was like, listen, y'all are fugitives. We don't mess with y'all. So it's had a divide in our people. So watch what happened. And the Gileadites took the passages of Jordan before the Ephraimites. And it was so that when those Ephraimites which were escaped said, let me go over. That the men of Gilead said unto them, are you an Ephraimite? If he said no, then watch they, this, watch they this. said unto him, say now Shibboleth. <laughs> and he said, Sibboleth. For he could not frame the, uh, to pronounce it right. Now this is all one people speaking the same language. You understand? So this is. This is one group of people. This is all Hebrews, all Israelites, all of the same nation speaking the same language. But these folks over here have an accent. So when the Gileadites, when they got it and they won, they took control of this area. And they said, you know, we don't mess with the Ephraimites. Because the Ephraim always tripping. Ephraim, they mess with the Gideon. And now they mess with me. They always tripping. We don't mess with y'all. So we kicked y'all butt. Don't come around these parts no more. We all the same people, so by look, you can't tell. So when he come up, he gonna ask him, are you an Ephraimite? Are you from Gilead? Are you from my hood? Are you, you know what I'm saying, where you from? You know what I mean? Then they say, say okay, you know what? No, nah, I'm from I'm from Gilead, man. Okay. Say what? Say Shibboleth. So he asked him, say Shibboleth. <laughs> Go ahead and say it. Pronounce it for me. Right? Then what they gonna say back if they from Ephraim? And he say, Shibboleth. Mm. What's gonna happen to him? For he could not frame the pronouncement right. Then they took him and slew him at the passages of Jordan. I kill your butt right here. At the time of the Ephraimites, forty and two thousand. He said, "I kill your butt right here if you can't pronounce it." Right to this day, you got it. Oh, this is good stuff. So look, we just we just talked about battle, right? The Most High God, when he wanted to split the people up, what did he do? He split the land. He, he split the land, but what else did he do? All the people start building up in one in one tower. Everybody spoke the same language. What did he do? Split the language. He, he split the language. He made everybody speak different languages. So on the smaller level, you look at Israelites. When it's a divide in us, you see that it was a different pronunciation. Same language. Same word. Just I'm pronouncing it different, and that causes a divide. To this day, right now, I'm going to pronounce Yahushua's name as Yahushua. When we met them Hebrew brothers at that one, at that one, what was it, G-O-C-C? Yeah. How they pronounce it? They call them Yeshaya. Yeah, Yeshaya. Right? You go and look online, you're going to see some people calling his name Yahusha. Right? You seen it, right? You see him online? Oh, yeah, praise Yahusha. Right? We say Yahushua. They say Yeshaya. Some say Yahusha. Do you get some? And you know black people always got to put some extra on something. You get some of these boys that be yeah, how a shot. Yeah. I be like, well, I don't know. <laughs> Look, I don't know where y'all be getting some of this stuff. I seen it Yeah, how a shot? Right? So you look at it just in that, all the same word. If they wrote in the Hebrew, they would all write this thing exactly the same. But guess what? Everybody gonna pronounce it different. It's a divide. The most high God did that, right? Give me um Give me Zephaniah. We're gonna try it. We're gonna, I mean, we're just gonna get through some word real quick. We ain't got too much to even talk about no more. How much time we got? Baby, how much time we got? It's 10 06. That's not telling me how much time we got. We got like 20 minutes. 20 minutes? Okay. She gave me 20 minutes. Let's see if we can make some quick work here. Let's see if we can just make some quick work. I ain't never heard nobody calling me a Howard shot. Oh, now you gotta look on. You gotta look on. You gotta, you gotta deal with these Hebrews across the world. Some of these boys, like some of these Hebrew boys, is different, bro. I be looking like, woo, y'all got some darn problems. So my question is, for them to find the difference to see if that guy was lying, he was a Gilead. No, I don't know who it was. Mm -hmm. The guy to find out if he was lying and told him to pronounce this word. Why didn't he just have the common sense to pronounce it the way? Because if we say somebody from New York, we say, say water, he's going to say water. 
You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's just like it's an accent. Yeah. It's like but Sibboleth definitely doesn't sound like what was the other way? It was Shibboleth, but he said Sibboleth. So he said Sibboleth. Like Lord. Shibboleth. Shib or Shibboleth. Lord. It's an accent. Or mug or mom. It's like trying. It's like meeting somebody from down south and saying, "Talk like me." Yeah. They can't do it. Some of some people learn how to do it, like, but most people can't. But can't. Yeah, I like that, baby. Y'all gotta see my wife. She's sleepy. You can tell a person from New York as soon as you talk to them. This is Zephaniah chapter three. Give me verse eight. Watch this. Right. If everybody speak the same language, the Most High God was thinking what? Unity. Unity. He like, listen, it, oh, we're going to have to get it. We're going to have to get it real quick. Okay, before we get Zephaniah, grab Genesis chapter 11. We just got to get it real quick. It's Genesis chapter 11. Give me verse 9. Give me verse 8. It's Genesis chapter 11, verse 8. Real quick. And then we're going right back to Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 8. We're going to get it real quick. It's Genesis chapter 11, verse 8. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there upon the face of all the earth. Scattered them abroad, that means not only did he split the language up, but he scattered them abroad. So you go that way, you go that way, you go that way. Right? Keep going. And they left off to build the city. He said, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. And from there did the Lord scatter them abroad unto, upon the face of all the earth. Right? Go, go back a little bit more. Go to <laughs> verse 6. What was it called before Babel? And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. And they he have said, one. Look, the Lord said, Behold, the people is what? One. And they what? And they have all one language. And they all have one language. Watch this. And this they began to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Listen, as one people, everybody speaking the same language and unified? Nothing will be restrained from them. They'll be able to do whatever they imagine. Most like God knew it. Most like God knew it. Whatever they want to do, look, they all unify. They all doing the same thing. Whatever them people want to do, they're going to be able to do it. Let me go ahead and mess this up. So he caused division. Right? A lot of this stuff, we be talking that unity stuff. That be our mind talking about all this all come together. That thing ain't God mind. God be looking at that stuff like, oh no, I don't want you to do that. I got plans. Like, what you talking about? I don't need you getting away with my stuff, right? So he make he make division, right? What do you think it is when when all these religions look at the same book and they all come up with it differently? That's God causing division. That's God saying, you know what? No, no I don't want it to play out this way, right? So now, if we all had a pure language, what do you think would happen? Unity. Let's go, uh, Zephaniah chapter three. It's Zephaniah chapter 3. Give me verse 8. It's Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 8. Therefore, wait ye upon me, says the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. Okay. For my determination is to gather the nations. Okay. He going he gonna to gather the nations. Because he already scattered the nations. We just read about how he, he said he scattered them abroad. Everybody with one people, they all spoke the same language. He said, okay, I'm going to confuse the language and I'm going to scatter them abroad. So then now, now when he come back, guess what? I'm going to gather the nations. And then what you going to do after that, Lord? That I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them my indignation. Okay. Even all my fierce anger. Okay. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Uh-oh. For then will I turn to the people a pure language. Then will I do what? Turn to the people a pure language. Oh, well, that got that. I'm going to bring all the nations back. I'm going to punish all of their butts. And they gonna darn get it. But then the people that's left, I'm gonna give them a pure language. And then what? That they may call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. So now I'm calling the Lord Yahushua. They call him Yahawashai. Some other one call him Yahusha. Some other one call him, what they call him? Yeshia. Yeshia. But he said, I'm gonna restore unto the people one pure language. So they can all call on my name with one consent. Unity. He won't he don't want these sinners and these people that ain't got no mind for him unified. Because whatever they imagine in their mind, which is gonna be wickedness, they're gonna be able to accomplish. Let me get rid of them first. Let me have my people, the ones that I've chosen, and then let me unify 
them. Let me give them the pure language. Right now, it's a reason why people can't agree on the simplest stuff. <coughs> a name. We can't agree on how it's pronounced. There's a reason for it. We all look at the same book and we can't agree on what it, there's a reason for it. Don't let this stuff discourage you. Don't let this stuff you look at in the world. You like, man, don't nobody agree. There's a reason for it. All right. The most High God set it up this way. He set it up this way on purpose. People, some people not supposed to get it. Some people supposed to be divided. Some people supposed to pronounce it Shibboleth. And some people supposed to pronounce it Sibboleth. Right. It's going to be one for this person, one for this. But one of them people going to get their butt toe up. One of them people, you're going to open your mouth up the wrong way, and that's going to be everything the most I got needed to know. Okay. Life and death is the power of what? What that mean? You speak stuff into existence? No. I mean, if I just say death, 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 that means somebody's going to die? Or if I say life, 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 somebody's going to lie? Live? <laughs> is that what it means? No, it's what do it mean? Life and death is in the power of the tongue. What what else could that mean? It has to mean like okay. By every idle word. Oh. Oh, that means I'm gonna be held accountable for what I say. Oh. Some people are gonna be saying some stuff. Most of the time, mm, that ain't a pure language. Okay, let me get rid of that. But. Huh? Some people just not to say nothing? Yeah, some people need to shut up. That's a fact. Some people be running they darn mouth, they don't know what they darn talking about. Alright? I'm gonna have to do a study on that scene. Now I gotta talk to a brother on um I gotta talk to a brother on uh, when, uh Monday. You know study what on what? The scenes, you ever heard of the scenes? The scenes? Yeah. What the Essenes, that? Essenes, I think it's pronounced. No. Um, so they, they the people, they try to say Jesus and John the Baptist was uh, of a sect called the Essenes. They like the, uh, they like the, so it was like, it's not in the book, but it's, uh, you have the, uh, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and you pretty much have the Essenes. It's like the, the biggest groups according to historical accounts or whatever. And then um, the Essenes was a lot like Christians before Christians. So in terms of, or I don't want to say Christians, they was a lot like the disciples. Um, and then later the Christians um, <coughs> before the disciples and the Christians came. So they, um, a lot of them believed in Yahushua after he came, but they was around before he came too. And so what they would kind of do is, you know what I'm saying, they all kind of lived together. They all kind of shared their money, you know what I'm saying? None of them was like too rich, none of them was too poor. Everybody shared everything that they had. Um, and so they had a lot of noble quality about them. They all kept the law, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you got to keep the law. And, and they were, um, some of the problems with them though is that they were about connecting with angels and, and uh, kind of like Buddhism and yoga and all that stuff, kind of connecting with spirits and all that good stuff. So that was their problem. But if you look at kind of how, you know, how people, you know, how people, you have like religious conversations. I know a Buddhist, you let, you got to let one of your I know a Buddhist that's more righteous than all types of people. This, that, man, like you ain't never met no darn Buddhist in your life. I'm all that line. But. That's what they're talking about, because you had you had these people that are very, very peaceful, very, very restricted, very, very disciplined, and you'll look at them and be like, okay, that's a good person by my own eyes, right? That's like a good person. So that's how the scenes where they were kind of restricted, very calm, you know what I'm saying? Very, very, uh, uh, very, uh, very uh, communable people, you know what I'm saying? Um, but they had a lot of problems in what they taught and what they believed. So nowadays, people who tend to be vegetarians or vegans or whatever because the Essenes were vegans. Now they start teaching, well, Jesus was an Essene because that's what they try to say. Um, and because of some of the stuff that Jesus taught, they were teaching also. Right? Did my man uh, eat some of the Passover? Uh, it's a, Passover? It's a uh, bread. Yeah. Yeah, they said bread. But, um, but yeah, they, you know what I'm saying? They said, you know what I'm saying? He didn't eat meat. John the Baptist didn't eat meat. <laughs> It's that another, so therefore he was a, yeah, they say, therefore he is a scene. That's me. Right? So you look at that, and then you look at him and you say, all right, therefore we shouldn't eat meat. Right? Now, Paul already warned us. He said, listen, there's going to come a time where they're going to tell you and forbid eating, eating meat. Right? So it's just something I'm, I'm going to try to get into it and break it all down well, for him. Like uh, I think we were reading it, like, uh, you know, about, we were talking about, we were talking about John, he said, 
He fed saying, the people fish. Right. He was talking about that. He said, but you said, he said, y'all called John that, that he was like evil or something. He said, but I come around eating and drinking. You call eating me and drinking. So that. He said, you know what I'm saying, y'all called me a glutton and a wine bibber. Right? So, it's, it's, you know what I'm saying, it's, it's a whole lot of problem with what they teach. We can light, you know, we can light they butt up, but you know, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to talk to the brother. I appreciate the brother, so I'm gonna try to talk to him. And there's a couple other brothers that got in the comments there, like, well, yeah, I want to hear too. You know what I'm saying? So we'll see. I don't know, I don't know if we'll do a video call. I'm not really in that video call stuff. They trying to debate and all that, but they just trying to, they just trying to discuss some stuff. You know, some regular discussion stuff. I might do it. We'll see what happens. But anyway, we good for tonight. Any questions? All right, well, let's pray out. Let's see what he's talking about. What they think they're gonna be eating in the kingdom? Think they gonna be eating up? Uh, what Adam and Eve? I made, I made, I made the fat calf ready.